three weeks ago, Andrea said, "Can you?" you know, she asked me once, "Can can you do this nice?" And nope, not not ready. I, I'm out. You know, so, so I think I think that's what I said later. That's me saying, "No, just forget about me. I don't want to get up here and I don't want to speak." You know, so but I want to be faithful, faithful to it. So I've had three weeks, and it's like today I'm like it, it snuck up on me, right? I'm like. Well, you've known it all along that you had to get up and speak. So before we, last night, Terry said, are you going to write? You know, have you written enough yet? I said, nope, I haven't written enough yet. And then today, when I got home, I sat down and I said, you know, I started writing. I'm do doing some things. She goes, are you not done yet? I said, nope, not yet. She goes, well, you better get done because it's six, it's six, what, it's six whatever. So had I been smart, had I not procrastinated, you know, I would have, um, this would be my second draft, and I could pencil it, and I've got arrows, this and that, so, you know, which way I want to say what or where. But Lord willing, we'll get through it. So if you, like I said again, if, if you like the music, I picked the, I picked the first song. I think Andrea probably picked the second song. And there's, a, and then um, the preaching over here tonight, I mean, it was in the same vein, you know, the blood, so... If you haven't guessed yet, that's kind of what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about the blood. Um, and get just a bit interactive here for a second. I, I looked it up in the King James Bible. Anybody have any idea how many verses they mention the blood in? Just a wild guess. Four thousand. A, a little, little high. Three, at least 375 verses they mention they mention the blood, and some of them are probably going to have, you know, multiple mentions of it. So, pretty important, you know, pretty important subject, you know. So, um, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needs not be ashamed. Um, for me, I need, I, need, I need that. I need it to study. I need it to get, get back into it. And then um, 2 Timothy 3.16, and we'll get out of 2 Timothy here in a minute, I'm sure, guys. 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and for um, re instruction in righteousness. And so the doctrine part is where we'll be tonight, um, talking about the blood. Now, will it be comprehensive? No. It's, um, try to dumb it down, not because of you guys, but because of me. You know, so um, there we go, so... So the blood and, and the scripture reference that I that I used for this was one that I used back when um see I what I what I'm gonna do Terry's mother had passed away um, Leviticus seventeen eleven for the life of the flesh is in the blood um and and, and we'll we'll finish we'll finish that verse but. So, I was thinking about that when I was talking to her husband, and just how how practical that is. You know, I mean, nobody here would disagree that our life is in our blood, but there's such more important, you know, our spiritual life is in the blood also. So, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon an altar to make an atonement for sin. Mm. So when we're talking about an atonement, the word atone has the idea of to wipe out, to cover, to erase. And it's often translated to make atonement, forgive, pardon, purge, and reconcile. At the end of the day, that's what we all need, right? We, we're all sinners, and we need to be reconciled to a holy and a righteous God. So because of man's depravity or the fall... Man is in need of atonement. Romans 5, 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We've, we've all sinned. Mm. And now the means of an atonement, how they do it, you know, the means of atonement is offering of a blood sacrifice or a bloody sacrifice. Now I wish I was a great wordsmith and I could... I could paint the picture like Pastor can over here about about the gruesomeness of the sacrifice, you know. But but it it it, it was. Um, 
the shedding in Hebrews 9.22 says the shedding of blood, um, it, it talks about it. shedding blood is central action in, um, in making atonement for sin. So Hebrews 9.22, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There's no forgiveness. So God has always required the shedding of blood sacrifice once once the fall had happened um, and we can go back in the old testament and we can see offerings and sacrifices offered up offered up to god as far back as um and and, and i struggled with the first first example i was going to give because i'm not sure it was a an atonement so we'll, we'll get we'll put that out there but adam and eve when they had sinned they um they covered themselves they they were they were naked and they realized it and then you, you come in just a little bit later, and God, what happened? What happened? What did God do? He killed an animal. They're, they're, we, now we see death has entered into the world. Not only are all humans going to die, everything that lives is going to die. But God had to sacrifice an animal to, to give them skins to cover themselves, clothes. So I don't, I don't know that that was an atonement. But And we can also see Cain and Abel. They... They made offerings unto God. You know, Cain, Cain was a tiller of the land, and he made, he made an offering of that um, to God. And God was displeased with his offering. And Abel offered the firstling of the flock. He offered a lamb to him, and God was very pleased with that. Um, you get in, and you start reading in Leviticus, and you, you're right in it. Right in it, guys. You're looking at blood and sacrifices and... Um, and offerings in there there and and again i wish i could paint better pictures than this but there's you know we see the shedding of blood the sprinkling of blood on altars and veils um not pretty uh, gruesome but i don't think it was ever meant to be pretty it, w it was not ever meant it it to paint a picture of the awfulness of sin and um i think when we talk about sin, I don't think we really um, understand it. You know, re really understand how how bad it is. We you know we make fun of it. We you know in 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 our actions and what we do and the things we watch, the things we say, all that. Um, Romans six twenty three says the wages of sin is death, and that and that is a once again very practical we're all going to die and but but that goes deeper than that physically we're going to die but spiritually sin has separated us from a holy and a righteous god and and what we need is we need to be reconciled reconciled to to that and also the word says the soul that sins will surely die the soul that sinneth will surely die and i and i would also add to this here that i would i would say our thoughts on sin versus what when a Hebrew heard about sin, I guarantee you they had a different they, they had a better understanding of what what was what was taking place. And when they heard the word blood, they most likely thought of a violent death and particularly the, uh, talking about the blood sacrifices in the Old Testament. The shedding shedding of blood and sacrifices has a special significance. The life of the animal was poured out. His blood was spilled in death as a substitute for the people the, the problem with that was the they atoned for them they had to continually atone for their sins it was a cover it was a covering they had to year after year the high priest would go into the the temple and he would very ritualistic and you know had to go in there by himself he'd go behind the veil god forbid if he died you know in there i mean um so, and but they would have to continually, continually offer it for their, for their sin. Um, it, it, again, it was only it was only temporary. They needed to be offered over and over and over again. They were a picture of what was to come. And this is it, we're getting ready to get to the good news here, guys. The sacrifice in the Old Testament find their fulfillment in the blood of Christ, and we sang about that in His sacrificial death death that's the good news guys that's the gospel just as and and i didn't mention it but 
and I hesitate to say it because pastor says you can't assume that people know these stories. <laughs> but so I wrote down here, just as God provided a ram for Abraham, God, God provided his son to be an atonement for us. So the story of Abraham, I, Abraham was old in his age and, and, and they couldn't have a kid. And he has a, he has a kid and he's promised, you know, to be a father of all nations. And God says, and it says, God tempted Abraham. God tempted him. He says, grab your son, take him up to the top of the mountain in Moriah, and offer him up, sacrifice him. So, grabbed him by the hand, grabbed the, I, I guess he probably had people, you know, carrying stuff with him to lay him up there and burn him. And kill. So, he brings him up top, and um, top of the mountain, and he leaves the others behind, and he's got the boy with him. Where are we going, Dad? Oh, don't worry about it. We're going to make a sacrifice. What are we going to sacrifice, Dad? <laughs> don't worry about that. God will provide. Mm. And God, God provided a, lamb, a ram, actually provided a ram for him. So um, God provided his son to be an atonement for us. A couple of scripture verses here, Colossians 1.14, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Um, Ephesians 1, 7, very similar to that. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And John mentioned that. He's thankful for God's grace. I am too. Romans 5, 11, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now have received the atonement. God not only covered our sin... We trust, when we trust in Christ, come to saving faith, He has cleansed us. He's wiped them away. He's not only covered them, they're gone. They're gone forever. Uh, amen. Amen. Pre preach it. I'm good. I'm good. We have redemption through His blood. Romans 3.24 says, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Um, God's wrath, the, the word propitiation means appe appeasement. God's wrath is appeased. Um, 1 John 4.10, herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sin, an appeasement. He appeased it. We have justification through the blood. Romans 5.9 says, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of to come or through him now justified if you've ever thought about it the just if you think about justified what what does that word mean what does justification mean what does justified mean it means made right made righteous and if you break that word down just if i'd just if i'd never sinned when god looks down on us he sees the blood applied we have the righteousness of christ he says 33 years, son of God. That you say, that's my son. Mm. Um, we have peace through his blood. Ephesians 2, um, 13 and 14. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus. For here's our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Colossians 1.20, and having made peace by the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. Mm. Romans 5.10, 5, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And uh, we, we can be sanctified through it. Uh, in 1 Corinthians um, 1 2, he talks, he, he's speaking to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. Set apart. We've been set apart. Um, now, this last one, we have victory in the scripture verse that I'm going to use. And if you're a strong dispensationalist, you'll say that this is only for them at that time. But I think it's dual application here, Revelation 12 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. So I think we can overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb. Certainly, certainly that. And then last but not least here, we have entrance entrance into the holy of holies. Hebrews 10, 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness 
to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We have a mediator and a direct access to God. Guys, we don't need a high priest to go in year after year and make atonement for our sins. We have a direct access right to God the Father, and we've got a mediator sitting there. He's, he's, he's arguing our case for us. He's arguing our case. So, um, Summary here real quick. Um, New Testament teaching on Christ's death makes it clear that Christ's blood was shed as a sacrifice which God provided for us. Jesus was a substitute for you and you and you, for every one of us in here. He, was, um, he bore our guilt and suffered the penalty of the law in our stead. He stood in our place. He died, he died a sinner's death when he had never sinned. I was telling somebody, I was telling somebody this week. I had two opportunities this week to some guy. I was walking, walking up the lot, and a guy's driving a truck, and he rolled the window down. And he said, "He goes, um, man, what, what scriptures are on your heart today?" But he goes, "I need it, you know." So, I started, and I, Leviticus seventeen eleven, the life of the flesh is in the blood, and he goes, "Man, that's a short scripture." And I said, "Well, there's more to it. There's more to it than that." And so I. Um, and so I was able to elaborate, you know, and I was able to share the gospel with him, you know. And then even today, I had a had a chance today. Somebody said, "Man, I'm glad to see you. Need to talk to you." And we went and talked, and um, and the conversation led to I was able to share the gospel. He was he was down on religion, and I'd ask him. I said, "Have you ever thought about it? Like going to church, getting connected, you know?" And um, he and his wife, and um, he said, "No, he had Roman Catholic background." jaded by something in religion i said i get it i said religion i said that's not certainly that's not god's way to man that's man's way to god it's not about religion and if it was about religion we could go down here to the latter-day saints house and hang out and that'd be good we could go to the temple the muslim temple or whatever and that and that'd be and that'd be you know and that'd be okay. It's not religion. It's a relationship. God, I'm told you know, God, God has made a way for you to be reconciled to him through his, through his son and the shed blood on the cross. So um, because of that, we can be reconciled to a holy and a righteous God. Again, the, um, having, therefore, brethren, having boldness enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We, that's, that's, how we can, that's how we can go. And then I think timely, th- 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 this study was kind of timely for us. We're, we were in the, um, the study that we're doing. We're in soul winning part of it or sharing the gospel. So we've been stuck there for about three weeks, you know. About three weeks there, and so it so it was good. And they've got kind of a kind of a Romans Romans road Romans road laid out in there. So you know at this, so I'll, I'll just go and I and I'm and I changed it up a little bit. But so um, the one thing knowing knowing what was done for us, knowing that we've all sinned. Yeah, you know, that would be the first point. Everyone is a sinner. Romans three twenty three. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And knowing that sin. There has to be a payment. There's a price to be paid for your sin. And that's a death. That, that's death. We, we all know we're going to physically die. We, we all see that in the Old Testament, they had to continually try to atone for the sin. They had to cover it. And we know now that Christ has died. He was the final atonement. For the wages of sin is death. That's, that's the, third, uh, the second point. Third point is God loves you, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And because, because he loves you, the next point, Jesus died for your sin, Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Mm-hmm. And if we'll trust, if we'll trust in what Christ did on the cross, fully trust, not try to add anything to it, take anything away from it, but trust that he fully and wholly took care of the penalty of sin, the scripture they use, and there's so many more we could use, 
Romans 10, 9, For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I would invite anybody, you know, if, if they've never made that decision, never been confronted with that, it, certainly anybody in here, I'm sure this is not the first time you've heard it, but I will say this, I was, I was 25 years old before I, and I grew up in church. You know, I knew I was a Christian. All you had to do was ask me. In fact, the church I went to was Christian Science, so it had to be Christian, right? <laughs> it had to be Christian. But then, then went to a Methodist church, you know, um, you know, a little bit, getting a little better. Yeah, I hope I don't offend anybody out there in <laughs> interweb world. Um, but, but I, you know, I heard I was confirmed at the age of twelve. Man, I had water put on my head, and and, and I'd heard the stories about Jesus and all that, but. I was 20, I was probably 25 years old before I ever heard the gospel. And for those of you who were here, when my, um, when my buddy came and, came and shared with us, he, he gave a great test. He's much, he's much better. He's, you know, he's a lot more charismatic than I am, you know. And, uh, but um, he was unashamedly, the joke is, and I told the pastor, I said, he'd, he'd eaten the guacamole, you know. If we eat something good... If we eat something good, we're going to tell everybody about it, right? And Ingalls, other than the last guacamole that I had, it was bad. We all, I always get that for Steffi and send it home with her. Didn't even, this was so bad, we didn't send it home with her. <laughs> but um, So he had eaten the guacamole. He, he had gotten a taste, and his testimony was, was fantastic, fabulous. But um, he had eaten it, and he had tasted it. What's, uh, Psalm 34, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Mm. He had tasted that the Lord was good, and he wanted to share it. He wanted to, he wanted to share it. So he comes into the squadron. We had just gotten back from Bermuda, I think, and he comes into the squadron. Who's this guy, you know, and you, you meet, and, man, he's just, he's just running around preaching. He's telling people about Jesus. I mean, he's just... And he says, are you a Christian? I said, yeah. You know, and he asked me why, and I tried to give him a reason. He goes, well, let me, t let me tell you what the Bible says about that, you know. So, so he, you know, he's, he's trying to straighten me out, you know. And we would sit around, and we'd talk about the Lord um, there. And then there was another guy there. Loy Hower was his name. We called him Howie. And Howie finally asked him one day, and he said, let me just ask you this, Kent. He goes, man, why do you always tell me about this Jesus guy? And he goes, well, and he looked at him, understanding that there's none good, you know. He goes, how are you a pretty good guy? He goes, yep. He goes, if you were walking down the road and my house was on fire, would you tell me? He goes, absolutely. He goes, how are your house is on fire? So, but Howie is, um, Howie's, and that's been third, that was 19, that was 1987, I think, 87, Howie got saved, um, how he was um, in the Navy for 30 years, got out, and he's a pastor in Washington now. So there you, there you go. So, um, but then, so shortly thereafter, he came to the squadron, and I got to, you know, he, he shared the gospel with me, shared the gospel with me. Finally, finally, I said, you know what? And I realized I need to, I had heard it. I had heard the gospel, been confronted with my sin, understood that I'd, Offended a holy and a righteous God, and that I needed needed to be saved. So, there there you go. And and luckily for him, and I had somebody, and I and I'll wrap it up here in just a minute here. But I had had somebody ask me and said, "What do you think the most influential thing after you got after you um, made a decision for Christ, trusted in Jesus?" And I said, "Being able to walk hand in hand, mentor." So very much and that so this will be a shameless plug for the continue book that we're doing right now you know really it was that was that was big for me to be able to you know just to walk with it and you know walk with me daily we worked we were in the navy together and then we worked together we built cabinets at night in a in a shop there at his house and um so just just been able to learn you know made mistakes he made mistakes you know but but it was good to have that so i think um the continue the continue book is 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 a fabulous fabulous um, tool 
from when people people make a decision. You know, to, you know they they come down to the altar, they pray, they you know, well, I've been born again, and we pat them on the butt, and we send them on out and say, go figure it out. And that ain't that ain't working. You know, I wonder how many of them figure it all the way out right out the back door. You know, so um, so anyway, I know I've um kind of rambled on it's probably time for pastor to bring this thing home i i don't know you know um but hopefully um i i often i often worry about you know getting up and speaking because one i don't know that i'm worthy you know to get up but but i want to handle i want to handle the word with due deference i want you know in, in the right ways. Again, go back to 2 Timothy 2, 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I want to rightly divide it. I want to handle it properly with that, you know, and certainly if you get up here enough, you're going to say say something that someone's going to have, have, you know, an issue with, but hopefully I, I brought it forth and it was relatively clear and that and on this topic of the blood, I mean, all we did, we just scratched it. I mean, we just, there's just a little small nick, and it's just one little, you know, what it is. But, I mean, there, there's probably weeks and weeks and weeks of study. And, obviously, we know at least 375 verses we could have gone through. But, hopefully, we went through them and, and you know, understand that Christ paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Mm. So, um, and you look at the number of songs that were, um, you know, that were written just about the blood. I mean, it's, it's amazing. So it's, it's obviously, um, obviously very, very important. And let me just see here. Uh, one, one more, one more thing, I think. I, I, might, I might need some help. You got you got a tablet there, Pastor? Colossians one fourteen. I ought to know it right off the top of my head. Amen. Amen. He um maybe I missed that there, but um so yeah, we do we we can have it. We can be we can be sure we have a sure salvation. And and it's um and it's it's available to all, all who will come, and and bow the, bow the knee, trust in what he did for us on the cross.